What's up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I wanna to talk about my real life experience owning and buying rental properties. My name is Brian Tran. I own over 20 properties today, bringing in over $40,000 in monthly cash flow. So I wanna talk about where it all started, why I got into it, and ultimately, you know, how I'm able to scale and just continue to buy properties to add to it. I'm talking about some of the problems, I'll talk about some of the pros, and all that. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys because there are some problems and it ain't all sunshine and rainbows, but let's get right into it. I wanna start off with why rental properties? Why not stocks? Why not crypto? Well, when I first started, crypto wasn't around. And to be honest with you, I'm not really big on crypto. I'm big on real estate because that's the American dream. My parents were immigrants and when they came to America, the American dream was to own properties rent them out and create passive income what i later learned is that it's not really as passive as most people make it out to seem but i'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the video so knowing that i wanted to own real estate everything that i was working towards was to save up and buy rental properties right not only that i started off my career as a real estate agent so i was an agent i was helping people buy and sell homes and i knew that they were making all the money in buying all these beautiful homes and renting them out. So naturally, I was like, I got to do the same. If I want to be rich like my clients, I have to own real estate. So I saved up. I scrapped together money. Right. And ultimately, I had to get a stated income loan. For those of you who don't know what a stated income loan is, I didn't have enough income verification to qualify for a loan. So some banks will actually go based on what you tell them you make. I know, I know, sounds like 2008. It sounds like something that is gonna like crash the market, but they do verify some things and they also wanna make sure that, you know, you still have a hefty down payment, right? That's how the bank protects itself. So I bought a property, I think this was 2015, property in Oakland. It was a four bedroom, two bath, but also had a huge basement that you could use as a room or, you know, whatever you wanted to. So that was a big pro. Bought the property for $385,000. And because it was a stated income loan, it's a little bit more expensive. If I had gone the conventional route and went with like a bank like Wells Fargo or Bank of America, it would have been a lot cheaper. And by cheaper, I mean the interest rate. When you do a stated income loan, they're gonna hit you. They're gonna gouge you. They're gonna smack you over the head. But it didn't matter because I was like, look, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get this property because I know that I can turn a profit. I know that I can rent it out for more than what the mortgage is going to be. At the time, they were charging me, I believe, five and a half percent interest rate on a seven year arm. A seven year arm basically means that for the first seven years, they're going to lock in that rate of five and a half percent. But after that, it's going to adjust with the market rate. OK. But I was like, you know what? By that time, I'll refinance the property. I got seven years to figure it out. The mortgage on that with property tax and everything came out to about $2,500 or $2,600 a month. But I knew that that neighborhood, if I had let somebody house hack it, and because it had four bedrooms and that room downstairs, somebody would be willing to pay me at least anywhere from $4,000 to $5,000. And that's exactly what happened. I found somebody who was willing to cram a bunch of people in that house, right? They were gonna live, and I think each person was gonna pay like anywhere from five to 600 bucks. So like as a whole, it was cheaper for them. But for me, I was collecting a, a lot more than what market rent was at the time. So you take 5,000, you subtract the 2,700 bucks, I was making like $1,300 profit every single month. And that was like huge for me, because at the time, I was driving a little Honda Accord Sport. The monthly payment was $325. And that $1,200 was enough to pay for the car, the gas, you know, give me a little bit of stability. And that's what rental property does, guys. If you do it correctly, and if you run the numbers and you buy right, the cash flow will allow you to offset some of your living expenses. That's all I cared about. To me, like if it would pay for the car and a little bit of food and some gas for the car, I was so happy, man. That was like the American dream. And then fast forward, interest rates started to drop. 
it went from five and a half percent it went to four and then three and as you know it became two and a half percent i refinanced that property and i went from five and a half percent interest rate all the way down to 2.5 percent my new payment guys dropped all the way down to 870 dollars a month so i was able to cash flow immediately an extra thousand plus dollars a month without doing a single thing just letting the market do what it does here's another cool part with that property then the city of oakland allowed us to build adus accessory dwelling units right which is basically another house behind this house that we had bought right because the lot was big enough so of course this was capital intensive we built a two-bedroom two-bath home directly behind it cost about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars with plans construction everything and i paid cash there are other options okay you, you know if you're watching this you didn't have to pay cash I could have easily could do a cash out refinance on the first house, take that money and built it. I was fortunate enough. My business was booming. I was selling a boatload of real estate at the time. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to cash this baby out because I like cash flow. I like collecting that one to $2,000 a month. It gives me stability. It allows me to just know that every month something's coming in and I don't have to worry about my expenses. So fast forward the front house is getting 5000 the back house was getting 2500 so i'm clocking in 7500 dollars a month and the mortgage on that property was 800 dollars so now i'm making close to uh you know there is some maintenance i'm not going to lie things break on the property but i'm easily easily clearing like 4500 dollars a month easy so I don't know about you guys, but $4,500 a month makes it, you know, kind of pays for rent, pays for a nice car, and then my active income is still generating and making money, but I have $4,500 a month coming in every single month. With that first property, guys, I was hooked. Like, the model proved that it works. And so, you fast forward a little bit more, I ended up buying a three-unit building, I ended up buying another three unit commercial. I ended up buying a condo in SF, which to be honest, isn't doing too well. And I got a thing about condos, which I'll tell you, uh, you know, another video, but I just started buying more and more, right? Utilizing loans. By this time, I no longer had to do a stated income loan. I had enough income uh, verification on my tax returns. I was a good candidate. So now I was getting favorable rates from good banks and it just started to stack and accumulate. And today, guys, that's how I racked up 20 units. Fast forward to today, I have over 20 properties bringing in over $40,000 in monthly cash flow. But let's talk about the challenges, obviously. By no means was this just a walk in the park. I had to eat crap and basically save as much money as possible from my active income for at least five years. Like, Five years of my life, I was making very good money, multiple six figures, right? Selling real estate, but I had to live way below my means. So when my friends were driving the nice Beamers, you know, going on the nice vacations, I had to remind myself that that vacation and that car, if I have it today, it's going to prevent me from being able to buy another property. So lifestyle wise, it sucked. You had to basically be rich on paper but not really have a whole lot you know because you couldn't really spend it because the thing about real estate guys it's very capital intensive now i know you you probably watch a lot of these other guys who teach you burr or subject to and you can buy properties for little or no money like that wasn't what i was doing and that's not what this video is about do i think those programs work 100 percent absolutely but to do it, you do have to focus on that, right? I was at the time just focusing on helping people buy and sell real estate so that I can take the money and just buy things the traditional way, right? Putting the 25% down, uh, sometimes 20%, and then getting a loan, 
and doing that. That's how I did it. And that's how I want to share. Like, I, that's the story I want to share with you guys. That's probably the route that most of you guys are going to go with. To do the burr, to do the subject two, it's a job in itself just to, to try to find these deals you know, manage the repairs and all that. The biggest challenge was working and saving that 20% down so that I can buy more real estate. So during that time, guys, it was madhouse. I was working 12, 14 hour days, trying to make as much as I can, neglecting my health. Probably not the smartest. I gained so much weight. Um, I made all the sacrifices so that I can basically buy more properties and you know, built this strong foundation. Is that the best way? You know, to me, I think that your 20s, you got to haul ass and you got to bust, you know, make it work. So I don't regret a single thing. Today, fast forward, those rental properties give me the stability, the, the, the monthly income I need to provide for myself, my wife, my kids, without having to worry about, you know, Where's my next paycheck going to come in from? And it kind of knowing that you have that rental income coming in every single month, it it allows you to kind of be a little bit more risky and a risk taker on other endeavors and other investments, right? And it starts there. Stable income, it feels great. Some other common problems with owning rental properties, you've heard it, nightmare tenants, right? A lot of my properties are in Oakland and with being in Oakland, you're gonna deal with some interesting people. So they're not gonna pay rent. You know, I've had to hire lawyers. I've had to pay thousands on evictions. COVID obviously happened. I had one tenant owe me by the end of it, almost $53,000. You know, did it hurt? Of course, but what can you do? You roll with it, right? And so I, with you guys hearing this, I still want you to know it's 100% worth it. But real estate is a volume game, which means you cannot buy one property and think that that's going to change your life. You need to hedge yourself and protect yourself by having multiple units. Even though during COVID, I had a tenant owe me $53,000 in the grand scheme of things, the other units were still paying and I was still able to cover the debt service. I was still able to turn a profit. Did I make less? Yeah, I made $53,000 less, but I still made a lot of money, right? And that's the beauty of real estate. But you have to make sure you have multiple units because vacancy is gonna be a very common thing. When that unit is empty, it's gonna cost you money, right? You still gotta pay the bank back the loan and that unit's not going to make any money for you until you put a new tenant in there. There are some things that you can do to shorten that time period, but sometimes, guys, it's just not much you can do. Um, you get you hit a bad season where it takes a couple months to rent a unit, or you get a unit back and you have to spend a couple thousand dollars on remodeling it. It happens, but it's a long-term game. It's not a get-rich-quick overnight. Real estate rentals are a get-wealthy over an extended period of time. And today, a big chunk of my net worth is my real estate portfolio. And, um, you know, buying in California, every 10 years, your property doubles. I'm kind of approaching that 10-year mark, and I can honestly say it is true. My real estate portfolio has doubled in value. And so in the next 10 years, I expected to do that again. And by the time I, you know, croak or pass away, right? Let's say got another 50 years, my net worth would have doubled five times. So you can get rich, like crazy rich. You just take some time and you can always refinance, pull that equity out, buy some more. And then again, every 10 years, it just doubles and it doubles. That's the cool thing about owning rental properties. Somebody else is paying down your debt. Somebody else is paying you some money and then appreciation will take care of the rest. You look back one day and you're like, whoa, I'm worth that much? That's the cool thing about rental properties. So I want to share with you guys something that I just started doing about six months ago. That's been allowing me to buy one to two properties 
every single month. And that is out of state investing. I was always so scared of buying properties out of state because as you know it, my mom had a brother who tried buying properties out of state and he lost his ass. But the thing is, times have changed. And also I just found out that he was buying in the hood. He didn't know what he was doing. He was just buying stuff. I took that philosophy of out of state investing and I just doubled down. I learned and you know, I started listening to bigger pockets and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pull the trigger. So late last year in December, I bought three properties out of state and you know, I, I, I vetted these property managers. You know, they're doing okay right now. Is there some hiccups? Are there some problems? Absolutely. But the cool thing is the cash flow is amazing for what I'm buying these properties for. The second thing is, I had to get out of California because it's it's a very difficult state to deal with tenants and the landlord rights aren't as favorable. So I found a state that is, you know, a little bit more favorable on the landlord side, easier to evict somebody if they don't pay you rent. And, you know, what also the big thing was, you know, how I mentioned the capital, like that being the hardest part in buying properties, because in California, you know, our homes are 700,000 to a million, a million plus to save 20% down for a million dollar property. That's $200,000. But I'm buying properties out of the state for a hundred, $120,000, 20% down of that 20 grand. And like I mentioned, my rental portfolios now generate enough monthly for me to buy one to two properties every single month. And I'm making about 10 to 15% cash on cash, which is remarkable. So I want to share more. And if you guys want to learn the exact strategy that I'm implementing, and if this video is something that you want me to dive a little bit deeper into, hit the comment section and I'll make a video just for you. Stay tuned, hit the subscribe button because that strategy that I'm doing is something I'm so excited about because it opens the door to more people to become rental investors. Let's go. Peace out.